Hi, today I'd like to talk a little bit about TMV2 and TMV3 mixing valves, ably assisted by Lucas and the techie department that uh, makes sure I do everything properly. TMV2 and TMV3 scheme valves um, are valves that are, are, are really safety valves that put into showers and, and baths and all the rest of it to stop people uh, scolding themselves. So, um, first of all, here we go, this is a, a TMV this is a TMV2 valve. How do you tell? Because the, the TMV2 and the TMV3 valves can look very, very much the same, but they will always have on them somewhere whether there are two whether there are two or a three. Um, and so this can this would this is a TMV2 as it happens, and this would fit underneath your bath or underneath your basin at home. And what it does is it um, will supply your bath tap or basin with a very regulated temperature control. And so you can also have something like this, uh, TMV2 or TMV3, just a standard looking shower valve, but for sure on the valve somewhere there will be um, a, a little disc or lo logo that suggests it's TMV2 or 3. This is, happens as it's TMV3. How will you tell when you buy the valve? Well, on the box they will always have this logo. Any manufacturer who's had their valves um, pass this test to become a two or th TMV two or three. Um, we'll shout it from the rooftops, kind of thing. Um, and the TMV three, um, like nursing homes or National Health, any of the the health board, tend to use a two or a three. There are places where it's suggested that it would be better to use a, it's an advisory to use a TMV two or three. And there's other places where it's best practice. Um, I think probably one of, the, one of the good examples would be that um, if you have an elderly person um, uh, bathing, if they're bathing on their own, then you would often want to fit a TMV3 valve. But if they're assisted ba bathing, then a TMV2 is necessary. In 2006, all new build houses in Scotland had to have a TMV2 fitted. And I think in t it was 2010 in England that became a requirement. So, for example, if you've got a fairly new house, in underneath the bath somewhere there should be a valve like this with the, um, the hot and cold going in and then the mixed water coming out here. The mixed water temperature should be held to within two degrees of what it's set at. On the, the, the list there are advisories in terms of temperature as well. Some of the temperature settings are a requirement and some of them are advisories. The, uh, we fitted these in a nursing home many years ago, the TMV3s, and the advisory I think was 42 or 40 or 42 degrees for a, for a bath and that some of the residents would stop taking baths because it was too cold and we had to set them a couple of degrees higher than, than the advisory. Anyway, these valves should hold the water temperature to within 2 degrees. And in terms of a TMV2, um, you would want to check it once a year at home with a thermostat. It should be always within 2 degrees of what the valve was set at. When you initially install this at 2 or a 3, the valve must fail safe. So if, for example, the cold water failed for, for whatever reason, I'll try and turn myself off, no, it's, it's a bit tight. If for, if, for any, if for any reason the cold water um, supply failed, you don't want boiling hot water either coming out your shower or coming out the bath. So the valve must fail safe, um, which means that basically if the cold supply fails, the hot needs to shut off automatically. In a TNV2, I think it gets about five seconds to do that. It doesn't need to shut it off entirely. If it comes down to a dribble, it's okay. But even that dribble should be at the regulated, no more than two degrees above or below the regulated temperature. So if the hot fails, uh, sorry, if the cold fails, the valve must shut down. Similarly, with um, in some of the, you know, with, with a shower, for example, if um, if the hot uh, the, the, if the hot fails and you're left with cold water, you really don't want an elderly person all of a sudden getting a really cold, um, cold sort of shock of hot water, uh, cold water, because I think that um, um, you know with with hot water you would get scolded, but with cold water if you get uh, all of a sudden. I don't know if anybody's done the McMillan Ice Bucket Challenge, you'll know what it's like to get covered in cold water very quickly. This set can give an elderly person a shock, um, so that's not a, not a good thing either. So, um, 
all of the valves, when they're installed, they need to be installed and tested, set to the correct temperature, and that temperature needs to be noted somewhere. And whether it's a, whether it's in a nursing home or just a TMV2 and a normally one, that uh, the TMV2 checked annually. The TMV3 is much much stricter. That all the manufacturers have different um, times for when the, the the temperature should be checked, but. Um, most of them are around that once it's been installed you should check it after six weeks and make sure that it feels safe and that it doesn't move out with the two degrees temperature. Then again at 12 weeks and then again at 24 weeks. And then after that it's down to just whatever the... Um, it depends on the type of use the valve is being used for um, and, and different places have different regulations in terms of it should be done once a month or once every couple of months. But whatever, the important thing to do with these valves is to note that uh, when the temperature has been checked, they should have, a, um, should, uh, have a, a chart where you write down the temperature of the valve, where the valve is, um, and that uh, the initial, initial the person that's done it. And that's the proof that the valve has been checked. So if something goes wrong, you can prove that the valve has been checked recently. A big worry for me is that these valves work so well and they can work perfectly for years. People forget about them. If they forget about the valve, um, and um, if they forget about the valve and don't check it, then um, and, and something does happen, then that person will be to blame. The the other thing the valves needs if they do go outside this two degree uh, temperature. Uh, either way, either up or down, then the valve needs service. It needs stripped down, cleaned, and a service kit fitted to the valve. Mm, we sell the service kits. But if you sit, and also that every manufacturer has online um, a sort of booklet with, uh, it tells you, you know, exactly how to set, how to, how to service it. Be very careful if you're servicing these valves and do exactly as the manufacturer suggests. There are no shortcuts. Try to take a shortcut and something goes wrong with the valve, then you will be to blame. You really need a qualified plumber that understands how these work um, to, to check them. So, there we go, TMV2 and TMV3 valves. They, um, they, there are different places for different things, but they are very important to stop people getting scalded. People have been actually died from being in a bath that's too hot. Um, so, they're a really, really important piece of kit. Um, and they're they're fairly complicated to know exactly where and when to use them. So, yes, I don't think there's much more to say about, the, about these TMV2 and 3 valves other than that, that, there's a, that they're, they're well worth fitting in terms of safety and in some places they're an absolute requirement in terms of safety. Uh, it seems to me now we've got, uh, uh, we've got a question here on our live chat. It's from, uh, where is it from? It's from Peter Moe. Uh, why would boiling hot water come out of an electric shower with no blocked filter? Well, Peter, um, normally what would happen is that there's not enough, well, not normally, there clearly is not enough flow going through the shower to cool it. I think we've answered this before in one of our live chats, but the way an electric shower works is there's 8 kilowatts or 10 kilowatts, depending upon the size of your shower. And the way you adjust the temperature is by the flow of water going through the shower. So, um, the faster the water goes through, the, the, uh, the less time it has to pick up heat. And what's probably happening is just the water's going through the shower too slowly and therefore it's becoming very hot. Um, the usual way to check, the usual things that go wrong rather, is check the valve that comes into your house, make sure it's fully open. A lot of people shut it down because there's too much pressure at the kitchen tap. There should be a valve on the line to the shower, check that that's fully open. That can also cause a problem, restricting the flow. And ultimately, the thing that goes wrong um, with showers, it depends on the manufacturer, but a lot of showers have a problem with the flow valve, the actual valve inside the shower that controls the flow. Uh, if, if, it, if it stops working properly, then it's not allowing the water to pass through the shower at the correct rate, and if it's slowing the water down, then that can cause it. You've also mentioned here that you've checked that there's no blocked filter. So it's, it's really got to be the valve that's faulty or the, the valves coming into your house or on the line to the shower that's faulty, not allowing enough water to flow through it. 
Um, the other, the, the, probably the one other time you get a problem with that is when somebody's fitted um, an electric shower to a low pressure supply and there's just not enough pressure, not enough water coming through the shower to cool it. So if it's a new install, make sure you've actually connected it to the water mains. If not, check the valves, you'll probably find that that's, um, uh, that, that's what the thing is. Um, ah, I see that it's an Aqualiza. And so it's likely to be, it sounds it's obviously like, a, well it's an, it clearly says here you've got an Aqualiza electric shower. So yeah, these are the things to check. Some of the, the newer electric, um, uh, Aqualiza electric showers have a thing called an engine in them. And so um, all of the workings of the shower are in one sort of plastic, not a plastic box, but they're in one plastic kind of container. So the flow valve, the thermal cutout, the heating element is all in one sort of sealed unit. If that's um, if that's the problem, then there's there's nothing you can do other than replace the engine in its entirety. It's it's just one of these things. Um, it always seems to me a bit of a waste having to replace the whole thing rather than individual components. But the the engine is actually is probably is quite a good idea because it's not terribly expensive, and um, by replacing the engine, you replace virtually the entire shower. So uh, it isolates a lot of problems you can get kind of in the one go. Um, and at the moment that's all the live questions we come at the moment. There's a couple that came in um, earlier, one from uh, Andy Jenner, uh, and so I'll just read it to you. Hi, uh, I have a Triton shower, when you turn it on it instantly switches to cold and runs for about 10 seconds and stops. Then it doesn't come on for hours, but just this, it does just the same. Checking the solenoid is showing 3.9 ohms and the electric and water supply is fine. Well, yeah, I know that on our page that we say, you know, if it's anything below 3.5 ohms that the solenoid is the problem. I think that um, the, the, the difficulty is, is getting to the solenoid immediately after it fails because it can start recovering as soon as, as, soon as, the, as, soon as it fails. Um, but it definitely sounds like to me, like oh, even though it's 3.9, it definitely sounds to me as if it could be a faulty solenoid. I, I guess that maybe when we did the solenoid video that we weren't particularly clear. I'll maybe have a look at that video again and add a sticky to it or something. Because um, I suppose that when you've been servicing so many showers as an engineer, you just accept that you know what's going wrong sometimes when you turn up to the shower. You can hear the solenoid clicking off um, and you know that that's the problem. I, I guess the answer in your particular case, Andy, would be um, probably just to to buy the solen a solenoid coil. These are relatively cheap, and pop that on, and then all of a sudden you isolate any of the problems that could be caused by the solenoid. The um, yeah, and so it's as simple as that. If you're not sure, and it sounds to me as if it, it, even though it's three point nine ohms, that uh, it it could be the coil. So just I would just buy a coil, pop it on and see. It's not that expensive and, and I'm pretty certain in your case you'll find out that that's, um, uh, that that's, what it, uh, that's what's caused the problem. And here we have another one. Oh, changed engine. <laughs> so Peter Moe has in fact, he just, he just come back to us and said he's changed the engine and it's all working fine. And yet then that, Peter, is the advantage of having an engine. You just change the whole thing and so anything that's wrong inside the shower is sorted in the one go. Man, as I say, that it always seems to me to be replacing all the parts when maybe you could only need to be replacing one, but uh, um, that's a discussion for another time. Um, and yeah, funny, uh, another one of the uh, comments that we had earlier. Um, Hi, Shower Doctor, just installed a Triton Aspiranti 9.5. There are two hot settings the RCD trips uh, when the knob is turned on to maximum, maximum heating. Yes. It's unlikely to be anything that's wrong with the shower. It may very well be that what you've done is you've uprated the shower. So perhaps you've had an 8.5 in beforehand and then changed it to a 9.5 and you may find that the, the, the trips with your RCD um, is, um, is causing the problem so that it's, not still, it's still not rated. 9.5, I think you need, I need my calculator which I've not got, but I think you need um, a 40 amp, minimum 40 amp fuse for a 9.5 kilowatt shower. It may be, in fact, because it's just what it works out just below 40 amps, uh, a 9.5. It may be that if you've got a fuse in that's 40 amp, it may be a case of just changing the fuse 
because it's that that's is you know it may be for lack of a better expression worn out so check the fuse that would be my first thing it's very very unlikely to be the, the shower especially when it's working okay in the lower power turn on to the higher power and if you find the fuse is just not uh, not rated highly enough to uh, to, uh, to to cope with the, with the new shower and um, if you have changed from an 8.5 to a 9.5 my advice would also be to get an electrician to check the wiring. The regulations have changed in the last couple of years and so if you're changing a shower, always change it for the same as what's, there be, what's been there before. If you don't, then you can run into the problems and issues that you have, with the, well exactly like you've had without an electrician looking at it first and it could to some extent be dangerous. Um, and I think that's um, I think that's that's all we've got in the way of live chat. There's a couple came in just really that's popped in over time. Um, that uh, from uh, Debbie H. Deb H. Fantastic demo. Just fixed my leaking shower and saved myself a fortune. Can't thank you enough. That's absolutely no problem, Deb. Um, Gurdi Singh uh, just saved me 150 quid in a new shower. Thought I'd have a quick look online. Find you. Thank you so much. And Ian Shelley, uh, really helpful video. Fixed our Myra Sprint's faulty solenoid without any problems. Many thanks. Yeah, I mean that's the whole point of what we're doing with this is that um, it's trying to just uh, well obviously advise you what spares to buy, and we hopefully will be selling you the spares. But it saves, and in a lot of cases, people just think, oh, it's a shower. We'll just change it, put a new one in, and quite honestly, for really a few pounds generally, the shower can be fixed and it'll last for another five, ten years. Um, and a rough uh, guideline I would say that, that an electric shower, as long as it's not one of the bottom of the range ones, an electric shower will last for probably eight to twelve years without any problems with it at all. Then it may need a minor repair and you'll get another five or six years out of it without any problem. An electric shower, as long as it's not absolutely bottom of the range, you should maybe get 15 years out of it with one repair along the way, which is pretty good value for money if you think about how many showers you've had. Mm. I hope that's not too much of a generalisation and find a lot of people complaining that their showers only lasted four years. But, um, but that's it. So, um, yeah, no more live chat. That's the, the um, the uh, replies we've had over the last month or so to uh, some of our videos. Um, keep looking at our videos. Tell other people about our videos. Like, share, do, just put them anywhere. That's what we do them for, to make sure that um, that uh, you can fix things in your own house fairly easily with just a moderate degree of um, of ability. The, uh, the other thing is that, especially with the live streams, that I'm not always sure because you kind of put on your on, on my toes a little bit that I get everything absolutely right. I'm, unlike my wife, I'm not infallible. So if you find anything where you think I've made a mistake, then let me know. If you think of anything that you would like to hear me talk about, then send us an email um, and we'll we'll cover it. There's not really an issue with that. If you've got any issues with the share, you can contact with your share. You can contact any of our staff by email. Um, send us a post or send us something online or even something through YouTube. Just, um, yeah, we're here to help um, and we're also here to sell spares. So um, thank you for listening. And uh, that's the stream over for this month. Um, and I would hope that uh, somebody can give us some suggestions of what you would like to hear about for next month. Thank you.